Life can be fast-paced, strenuous, and flat-out overwhelming. Life transitions and taboo topics can make it hard to catch your breath. Welcome to Breathe, a podcast that enables you to slow down, get your bearings, and engage in real conversations where no topic is off limits. Breathe is presented by Breath of Life, hosted by David Person and speaker director, Pastor Deblier Snell. Welcome to Breathe. I'm David Person, and of course, sitting across from me, casually cool, Ca- yes, casually yeah, cool, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Pastor Deblier Snell. Yes, sir. Come on, sir. Come on, come hey, I'm on, doing come good, on. man. I'm, right. I'm enjoying this. Fall life. It's another yeah. Monday. I'm yeah. in the another studio. Monday. Got my brothers. Got yeah. the Breed family, man. I mean, Breed, man, what else could a man ask for? Like, <laughs> He's doing all right. He said everything. He, he said, said all of them. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. These are the things. That's right. Pastor Kirk Nugent. Look, he got the B-boy look there. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> he got the B-boy yeah, look. I love, I love the B-boy. I love it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. That's well, it's, good. It's good to be here in the studio. Yes, and, indeed. Uh, and I think the topic we're going to tackle for this episode mm. is um, is a serious one that um, um, perhaps in our more, I'll say, confessional moments, absolutely, all of us as believers can say there have been times yep. when mm-hmm. we have felt far from God. Sure. Yep. Yeah, I don't think anybody's exempt from that. Yeah. N- not not a one. Yeah. No. No. Not a one. There's mm-hmm. been a gap. You just a Maybe it's a silence, a disconnect, mm-hmm. whatever that is. Yeah. Um, testify. <laughs> what, what's your experience been like with that? Well, yeah, no, I, I just think it's 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 several things that you 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 mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, there have been times where just because I was in a spiritual drought, or maybe you know certain habits were able to kind of creep back in and mm-hmm. gain residence, and there was that sense of being far and alienated from God, or even just in those moments of adversity. It's funny, like when you read the Psalms, like one of the constant refrains or complaints of the Psalms mm-hmm. is like, man, God, you have turned your ears. Yeah, or, yeah. You, you know, yeah. Why are you silent? You know, and why are you not hurting David, me? Man. I think that when you're in a, in a tough spot and some, for whatever reason, <laughs> there is a revelation blockage or you just are not able to hear God or sense God's movement or help or direction cl- with clarity. There is that sense of, of being far from God. Or you, you know what? One of the things that makes you feel far from God, and I have not felt it in this way personally, but I've seen it in the, in, in the lives of enough people who I know who are authentic believers. Mm. Physical pain in a prolonged way, mm. like when, when you are just hurting, hurting. intensely mm-hmm. for a long time, it really, I've seen it really turn people's faith inside out, out. Mm. Uh, because there is this sense, like when pain is, you know, physically relentless pain, it, I think it, it just has a taxing effect, yeah. and it makes you really wonder, is God out there? Is he for me? Is he still available? Mm, wow. So on and so forth. Mm, mm, um, mm. So I just think that you know that's not my personal experience, but I've right. seen it with enough mm. consistency to know that there's something to it. Um, and so I just think that you know, in a, at various and sundry times in my life, I've just felt far from God. I remember when Gian and I were in that miscarriage season mm. where there was loss, uh, that was a season mm-hmm. where I felt very far mm-hmm. from God. Mm-hmm. Like, man, my prayers don't avail. <laughs> you know, um, you yeah, know, there was silence. It's real. The why and the when, like those things were not clear. And so I just think all of us at at some point, maybe whether it's moral shortcoming, whether it's just circumstantial difficulty, pain. I think we all have that sense at times. Mm. Mm, yeah, I know. I think there's also you know this whole component of <clears throat> if. God is with me, mm-hmm. all things are going well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, m- I'm, I'm able to pray and, oh, let me talk to him because he can get a prayer through or she yeah. can get a prayer through. And, you know, there's just this sense of, yeah, God's just going to block everything and I'm going to have smooth sailing. And, you know, I've, I've been doing what I need to do. I've been checking all my boxes. And so, of course, God is with me. Mm-hmm. But the, the testimony that we see in Jesus. Yep. Is not that. That's true. And, that is and, true. And that's that's the thing that <laughs> I mean. So because if, if God was far yep. mm-hmm. from us, mm-hmm. uh, though, I mean, if, if 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 that was the tenet, if that was the measuring stick, mm-hmm. then then we would say, okay, so then Jesus should have had everything good. Mm-hmm. 
But there are times where he actually had to steal away early in the morning mm-hmm. to go and get another dose and, and you know, just kind of reconnect and hear yeah. from God. I just, those are the rhythms that I think people, we, we don't um, value as much in the whole concept of is God far or near. Mm-hmm. But I also believe that if God was really truly far from me, I would probably cease to exist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's true for all mankind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, if God doesn't call it, continue to allow my heart to beat in the rhythm that allows me to breathe, I cease to exist. Yeah. And I, th- I don't think we realize or recognize how much God has to do in order for us to continue to live. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. that's where we get this concept of I'm far or I'm near because of some of the things that we're doing, but not yeah. necessarily because we see the reality, of God's fingerprint in everything that we're doing. So what about, um, this, this brought to my mind, um, mm-hmm. When Jesus was on the cross, mm-hmm. and he said, my God, my yeah. God, why, why have you forsaken, forsaken, forsaken me? Yeah, that's Isn't exactly. That just another way of yep. saying, God feels far from me. Yeah. I yep. don't feel you, God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you yep. seem Very like much. you're far away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why he's the perfect Savior, because <laughs> he was touched mm-hmm. with the feeling of our infirmities. Absolutely. And, and, and as a man, you know, facing the passion and the agony of the cross, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, that sense of God's nearness that, you know, he talked about how he and the father were one. one. That was his testimony. Woo. But in that moment, moment, you know, there was a sense of aloneness yeah. that that poured out of him. Uh, some believe, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I think it is him identifying with the human experience. Some believe that or say that he was quoting. I think it was at Psalm 22 mm-hmm. where David says, why has thou forsaken me? So on and so forth. Mm-hmm. But I, I just think that that was his lived experience at that moment. And that's what really helps me to know that he can understands me, understand yeah. me in yeah. those moments Absolutely. where I have sorrow and a sense of mm-hmm. alienation. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that this is the thing that I, I think we, I'm hopeful that we can drive home. Mm. So there are times where we feel far from God, mm-hmm. but feeling far from God doesn't mean that you're far from God. Okay. Okay. Like, I, I just think that's, I think it, it is a real feeling at the time. I think it is uh, the emotion suggests that that is the reality. But, man, like if you're in difficulty and you're in a stressful situation and life is turned upside down, Psalm 34 says that the Lord is near unto the broken heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he saves such that has, a, a you know, kind of those who are crushed in spirit. So, you know, like the truth is that like in, in times are really hard and upsetting you know, God in some ways is closer then than when all is well and and opulent and full and plenteous in life. Uh, Psalm 145 says that the Lord is near to all those who call on him, right. who, who who look to look who call on him in truth. And so I just think that there is, you know, one of the the deceptions of the enemy is to create this artificial chasm mm. that says you're way over here. Mm-hmm. And God is way down here. Yeah. And you've got such a chasm to cross to where you can know him, have intimacy with him, have experience with him. But at the end of the day, like when my heart is broken, he is near. At the very moment I call upon him, he is near. Yeah. And so this idea that I'm far from God, that is the feeling, but it is not the truth. And, and at some point I think it's important that somebody says, okay, I need to walk in the, the truth. truth. Not, not necessarily the feeling, the, the feeling mm. because God is near when like you're going through a divorce. God is near. near when you have lost. God is near. Like when your enemies seem to prevail, God is still near. Mm. Like, I mean, you know, even, man, it's crazy. Like, man, God is so close that when the, the three Hebrew boys got thrown into the fiery furnace, see him. <laughs> God was already in the fire waiting for him. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So like God is, is near um and and but we are gonna have that feeling. Yeah, we are gonna have that sense. Yeah, but I, I do want somebody to know that like just because I feel far from God doesn't yeah. mean that I actually I am. am that far from Him. That's good. That's good. And that's a that is an exercise. It is a it is it is it is a decision. Yeah, that we have to choose to make. Mm-hmm. The reality of the truth. Yep. Of God is that He is near. He's near. But my feeling says. Mm-hmm. It seems like he's far away. Yeah, yeah. And and you've got to actually make a conscious, not a heart, not a you know, 
feeling, but a decision towards, I'm going to believe the truth of God, mm-hmm. that is, which is that he is near. But well, I, um, well, no, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. But, but I think, so, but one of the uh, things, one of the areas where we have to course correct is measuring God's love mm. through circumstance. Yeah. I mm. think there's, that's that, good. That, that, there, that is a flaw. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, God's love is unchanging, though my circumstances are always changing. changing. Mm. And so, you know, I think that sometimes, you know, so that, you know, you hear in church settings, man, they're talking about how, oh, man, this week God has been good to me. Mm-hmm. And what they really mean is that circumstances have been good. Man, <laughs> I, money has been abundant. And, mm-hmm. You know, uh, compliments, is, compliments have been in abundance. And, yeah. you know, things are going well. Ooh. But, like, man, like, no, God is still near and he is still good when there's a little less money available and, you know, people are not speaking kindly about yeah, you and yeah. things are not going, you know, kind of circumstantially well. And, and so I just think that, you know, I've got to learn how to um, measure, man, my favor through intimate connection, yeah, not outward circumstance. Because yeah. at the end of the day, Jesus says, man, listen, man, he, <laughs> Jesus said this, that. I'm going to make the sun rise on the evil mm-hmm. on the good, and the good. Mercy. Right. And the rain is going to fall on the just and the unjust. Mm-hmm. So into every life, there is going to be sunshine and rain. Yeah. But like God is the same regardless of the season or the daily outlook. Yeah. And I think that we've got to kind of make sure that we stop connecting my sense of like how much God loves or how close he is or how accessible he is based upon what is happening in a sad season. So wow. Paul said, I've learned to be content. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. In whatever state I'm in. Whatever mean, state I'm in. Right, yep. right, That's, right. That can be hard to embrace sometimes. It is. You yeah. know, like I'm going to confess, mm-hmm. when I got money in my pocket, yeah. I'm like, God is good. God is good, yeah. I'm feeling God, man. I'm feeling God. <laughs> tell come the truth. Come yeah. on, tell the truth. When the money, when yeah. the money is low, mm-hmm. and I'm hey trying God. to figure okay. out yeah. what we're doing am right I now. going to be able to pay this bill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. You yep. preaching. Yep. Then I'm starting to feel like, hmm. Yeah. Where are you, Jesus? Where, where yeah. you What did I do? Right. And, yeah. and you know, and if I could add on, because I've been there, yeah. and I don't, I don't want you to feel like you're out there by yourself. I've been there. I've been there. But the temptation in those moments when the money is funny, uh, right? The, the, <laughs> right? <laughs> Things are not quite going the way that you thought they should. Yeah. The temptation is not only to say that God is far, but also to say, what have I done? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's true. Um, man, man, maybe, yeah. man, you know what? I did, I did tell that lie. Yeah. yeah. And this is why I'm suffering. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's why I'm suffering mm-hmm. right now. That's mm-hmm. why, that's why I'm in the shape that I'm in. Yeah. Because, you know, this, these are the, these are, these are the circumstances. This is my cross. Yeah. This is my cross right now. So I, I I I hear what you're saying, and I, mm-hmm. I could not res- could not resonate with you more. But I also feel like there's that other component mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where we we because we do feel like it's dependent on what we do, mm-hmm. right? That God will only be close to me because I have been good. Right. Well, haven't we been trained yeah. uh, to think? Unfortunately, many of us mm-hmm. have been trained to think, even from the time that we were children, mm-hmm. that God punishes us. Yeah. Based on what we do and don't do. Listen, yeah. listen, mm-hmm. right? listen. Yeah. You know, be, be, you, you, you know the, you know the right. song, Be Careful Little Hands. Yeah. What did you hear? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mess, because the Father yeah, up above, is. looking yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a whole thing. It's a whole yeah. thing. Look, we've been singing these things. We It's, yeah. it's ingrained <laughs> in us. Yeah. Oh no, you're you're completely right. We've been taught this. So mm-hmm. it is it is the unlearning of it that we have to do. And 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 it also it comes down to just kind of knowing God. Uh, I'll tell you what, one of the things that really has helped me, um, I've done this before, but this year in particular, 2024, uh, decided I'm going to read through the Bible again this year. And so literally just this past week, we just started the New Testament. And so it's been absolutely amazing to, to go through the Bible and this time doing it chronologically. But here's the thing, regardless of what has happened in the course of the day, whether I feel the day has gone good or bad. I know in the morning I'm going to read another portion of the Bible. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and there is something about knowing I'm going to, I will have this time with God mm-hmm. regardless of what my day has looked like. Yeah. That centers me back yeah. around this relationship. Sure. That I have this carved out specific time that I'm going to be spending with God. Yeah. And he is speaking to me. He is sh- revealing to me. Mm-hmm. He is sharing with me. He's giving me insight and perspective on my marriage, on my finances, and my kids, and my business. And 
those times I don't feel berated. I feel like I've got a friend. Yeah. Mm. And I think that's the thing that combats all the other stuff, the noise and our upbringing, in the, for yeah. better or for worse, yeah. is that we have this relationship. Mm. And I, I think for many of us, the missing ingredient is that we have not made time to actually have a relationship yeah. with God. Yeah. So let me yeah. just say this. And I, I was saying this to some folks in another context uh, um, uh, this past Sabbath. Mm. Um, I sometimes feel that when we Christians get together, we it's pretty <laughs> clear that we're experiencing some PTSD. Mercy, mercy. <laughs> that mercy. we have been traumatized mercy. Mercy. by the way we were raised. Mm-hmm. Mercy. mercy in the church, mm-hmm. and 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 this whole question <laughs> of feeling far from God, to me, kind of runs parallel to that. Mm-hmm. That whole idea that yeah. um, you know um, there are things that separate us and can separate us from God, and that God, even though we talk about grace. Mm. We still continue yeah. to mm-hmm. yeah. wrestle yeah. with the idea of God being this sort of God of retribution. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, yeah. like if I'm not living my life in a certain way, you know, God is going to punish me. I know what I hear sometimes from people is, um, you know, not not directed at me per se, but just generally speaking, they'll say. Well, you know, you need to get right with God. Mm-hmm. Make yeah. sure you get right with God mm-hmm. before it's too late. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when before I too hear late. that, mm-hmm. yeah. I kind of recoil on the inside sure. because I'm yeah. thinking, yeah. I don't think that's how it works. Mm-mm. Wow. Mm-mm. Yeah. I, so, wow. so I, I understand the thought that they're trying to communicate, <laughs> yeah. but it's just the wrong way to do it, mm-hmm. right? Because um, humans can't. We can't get, get right, right with God. Right. Right. Like even that is just, it's an impossibility. Right. You know, that's not even how salvation works. It's right. not me getting right with him. It is me accepting that the free gift of, of salvation. Come on. And now I need to do that before it's too late. But Absolutely. Like, but it, it, it suggests that I've got to get this process complete. Mm-hmm. I've got to complete these steps. steps. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, let me get these I, things. Yeah, I got to reach, reach this check level. These, check these things. Right, out. I got to check out the boxes. Mm. And um, so, yeah, I just think that there's so much unlearning. But like, even when you talk about that, like this whole idea of being far from God, right? But what is one of the unconditional promises of Scripture? It is the promise of his presence. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, he literally says, man, the psalm is like, when the mother and father <laughs> forsake me, mm. the Lord Mm-hmm. Is gonna take yeah, me in. Yeah. Where yeah, can I, mean, I go from your presence? Right. Yes, you know, right. I mean, he <laughs> says yeah, in yeah. both the Old te- mm-hmm. Testament or in the New Testament, I will never leave thee, yeah. nor forsake. Yeah. Nor forsake yeah. you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He says, yeah. "Lo, I am with you always, mm-hmm. even to the end mm-hmm. of of mm-hmm. the earth." So I just think that, like, one of the mm-hmm. unconditional promises of Scripture is the guarantee being that that I'm going to be with you. He says mm-hmm. that when you pass through the waters, yeah. I'm em- going to be there. When Emmanuel, you go through the flame, em- yeah. I'm going to be with yeah. you. Yeah. Emmanuel. God Emmanuel yeah. So I'm just yeah. saying, I just think that like so much <laughs> of like this idea is it's not rooted in scripture. These are not, it's not a, a, a biblical motif now like that I got to work through and right. get myself close back to God. No, he is saying I, I am near when things are good. I am near when things are well uh, are bad. And I just think that that's where, again, we've got to walk in the truth of his word mm. and not yield to the feelings, to the upbringing, to the bad religion, to whatever it is that is kind of creating that construct in our minds. And, and it's funny because there are some people, the reason they feel far from God is because they feel like the distance between their, the distance between their sin and perfection mm. is the distance between them and God. Mercy. Like, that's how they see it. Yeah. Like, all right, when I can mm-hmm. finally overcome mm-hmm. this, mm-hmm. then I'm I can cool. be close to him. Mm-hmm. You yes. see what I'm saying? Yes. Mm-hmm. And so, like, yo, if that's how you measure in, mm-hmm. how close you are, to, oh. man, I'm far. I'm I, far. I got <laughs> a long way to go, Doc. I mean, <laughs> and, and that doesn't just come uh, out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's something that we are taught. Yeah. You yeah. know, either directly or indirectly, right? No, 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 definitely. That's the case. So, you know, I mean, because we're, but I think the question is, I'm just wondering, 
where are we getting that from? Yeah. <laughs> like, how are we coming to those conclusions? Like, I ain't going to lie, like reading the Bible. But, but see, and that's why I do think the Bible says study to show yourself approved. Because I think that at the end of the day, if you constantly, if you're, your view of God, your view of how close I am to God, if you allow that to be framed by what other people say, Mercy. Mm-hmm. you're going to be in a world of hurt. Mercy. Mm-hmm. That's why I think that you've just got to be settled in your own mind where you've got to open up the word. Like, if you want to know what God is like, you need to start with the Gospels. Mm-hmm. Matthew, Mark, Luke, Luke and John. John. Because in it, like, you know, G- you know, you know why Jesus had to come? He didn't come just to die. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because he could have mm-hmm. came down, he could have came straight down one day, died, died. went back three Thank days you. later. You yep. see what I'm saying? Yep. But the reason he walked amongst us for 30 some odd years mm-hmm. is he wanted to show the world what God was He's like. like. Oh, um, that was it. it. Like he he that's needed it. us. So like, because again, we have this idea of the God of the Old Testament and Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like, no, Jesus is saying, I got to come down here so that in human form, you you understand what God is like. And so it's funny because like there's be some times where people would say like, man, <laughs> you know, I love God, but I hate the church. Mm. Um, but but mm. at the end of the day, it's because there is a difference between how the church acts mm. and how, how Jesus God. acts. Yeah. And, and so I just think that, you know, we've got to kind of get to a place where, like, the word of God is our compass. It is our guide. And and I think some of those feelings that kind of have us feeling disconnected, separated, uh, like, man, contact with God is unattainable. Those things will disintegrate uh, in the because they cannot stand the script scrutiny that the truth brings to those ideas, mm-hmm. and and I think at the end of the time, the end of the day, you got to let every errant idea wilt under the scrutiny of truth that comes when the word of God gets lodged in your soul. I love that. I think Gandhi said, uh, at least that's, this is what I've been told. He said, I've heard this a number of times. I love you, Christ. Mm-hmm. I don't care for you, Christians. Christians, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> Some variation. Mm-hmm. Of that. Something like that. It's yeah. a rough yeah. paraphrase. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think uh, you're right. We are we are taught some things that are faulty the- theologically speaking and biblically speaking, but it doesn't come out of a vacuum. It comes out of a misinterpretation mm-hmm. of what of what has been read. And, what has been read, yeah. And what has been taught, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Well, it, it, I think it also just the I think humans' default setting is that nothing is free. Mm-hmm. And so the whole concept of grace, it is, and the whole concept of of salvation mm-hmm. is foreign to us. I think, I mean, yep. literally, I think our minds mm-hmm. malfunction when we recognize that heaven can be the price for heaven has been paid for me. Yep, yep. Our minds malfunction when, and mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. unknowingly, unwittingly, uh, subconsciously, we put these other mm-hmm. things in place to kind of, be, you know, let me stair step. Towards sure. that, I don't want to mm, make sure. people feel like you can just rock up and get heaven. Yeah, mm-hmm. even though that's exactly what God says, like you, you accept this, and mm-hmm. but it, it's I think that's that's the, a part of the human condition. Yeah, no, yeah. no, you hit the nail on the head with that because I, I think that is kind of a breakthrough moment because salvation, the idea of salvation, it is counterintuitive to and, the human yes, experience. Absolutely, like because at the end of the day, you know, I mean, because everything you're taught, whether you're religious or not. It's kind of performance based. Mm-hmm. So you do well, exactly. you get a treat from parents. Boom. You Boom. make good grades, you get the honor roll. A, B, you work C, hard, D, you F. get a promotion. <laughs> so like works or deeds are how you move forward in every other every, every area of life mm-hmm. except for salvation. Like salvation is the only area of life where your deeds are counted as nothing, nothing. where your works are not evaluated. Mercy. Well, like so like so because let me be clear. Like, cause even in, you know, Jesus says by your fruit, you'll know a tree by the fruit it bears. Mm -hmm. So like when you look at Christian fruit or Christian works, like Christian works are not the seed that produce salvation. Mm -hmm. Christian works are the fruit that identify the tree. That's it. You you, kind of get what I'm saying? Oh yeah. So like, you know, like, you know, the the fruit just lets me know what kind of tree it is. That's it. But the fruit doesn't, you know, that what that, it doesn't it doesn't produce the tree. No. Right. And so, like, that's kind of the way we have to to re, to to understand it. Mm-hmm. So, like, mm-hmm. even our works, they are authentication, mm-hmm. but they they don't produce our salvation. Come on, gotcha. come on. Yeah, that's that's, it. that's a great analogy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So, um, 
What yeah. do we do when we've been feeling far from God? What do you suggest that we do to try to reconnect or to feel that closeness? Because mm -hmm. even though we may get intellectually yeah. that that God is not far away, if we're not feeling the closeness, mm -hmm. it still it, it still can be complicated. Can I? Right? Can I? Let me let me just take a stab at this uh, before yeah. you dive in. Uh, I'll let me just say first of all. I, I, I've had to kind of course correct for myself in my thinking where the feeling of the distance is concerned. Mm -hmm. um, if I didn't feel far from God, I would be more concerned. Mm. What, what okay. I'm saying is mm. the, 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 the reality mm -hmm. that you feel a devoid, like the, oh, feeling like there's a distance, it, it means there's still hope for you. Mm. <laughs> it means that you you still have you still have an awareness that you need God. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you you see yeah. what I'm trying to say? Yeah. You there's yeah. there is uh yeah. because if you didn't I want to be clear, there are those who don't feel it. Mm -hmm. And they are far. So I mean, so I I, I always want to kind of let me let me start that by saying that's there's a you, you know, you almost a thermometer to read the temperature of the room. You you do want to kind of take an assessment to say, where am I? Where am I? Um, am I in the far country? Am I, you know, where am I? Like, wh what am I, have, am I working towards it? Um, do I see the fruit of the spirit in my daily actions, words, deeds? Where am I? Sometimes taking an assessment to say, this is where I am. I'm not even talking about a distance per per perspective at this point, but being able to have that awareness of where you are is is a good place to be mm -hmm. but for the person who just feels like i you know i didn't i don't feel him the way like i felt him yesterday mm -hmm. i don't feel him like the way i felt him when i you know as they used to say the good old days when we used to sing hymns and side by side and that kind of thing uh maybe maybe god is tr manifesting he's showing you himself in new ways i encourage that person i encourage me to go back to god in prayer and say, God, wh how, where am I in relation to you? Number one. Number two, are you showing me something new about you? Are you are you revealing something new about yourself to mm -hmm. me? Uh, I, I I never want to yeah. get into a rut where I right. the only way that I experience God is the way that I experienced Him yesterday, right, or yeah. last year, yeah. or before. Yeah. God could be trying to show me something completely new, and I don't want to miss that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I always I always encourage myself to say, okay, God, I don't, you know, you mm -hmm. you do what you do. You you may show up in a different way. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like saying, well, I have a financial difficulty. You showed up like this before. Um, do we want to show? Do we want God to show up in this exact same way every single time? I don't think so. I think you want to give God latitude to to blow your mind essentially, mm. latitude to do the unexpected, yeah. to do the supernatural, latitude to to use you as an example or a testimony yeah. so that you have something to share with others as they come into your sphere. So I, I always always want to, you know, have that tension of, yes, I may not feel God the way that I felt him before, but does that mean I'm really not feeling him? Mm -hmm. Does that mean that he's really not here? Yeah. Maybe he's showing up in a new way. Right. Um, and then, of course, that, that sensitivity to know that, yeah, maybe sometimes I do need to take a take a check of yeah. the of the temperature in the room and yeah. where am I? You know? Yeah, so I think that it's necessary to kind of acknowledge, you know, kind of right now, I'm a little disconnected. Mm -hmm. But I think the idea of being disconnected and far from God or it can be different. It kind of suggests two different realities. Yes. yes, you know, if I'm disconnected, I, I plug in. Yeah, but if I'm if I'm far from God, it suggests that there's this man, mm. this, this long, arduous journey I've got to take to, to know him. him. Yeah. When really it's <laughs> like Yolanda Adams, God said, you know, I'm just a prayer away. Wow. <laughs> it's it. not That's like it. this That's great it. series of soteriological gymnastics you've got yeah. to do yeah. in order yeah. to get close. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a prayer away. Um, so I think, one, I, I can acknowledge disconnect, but it doesn't mean that he's miles and miles and miles right. away from right. me. That's right. an imagery I think we need to disabuse ourselves of. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing, too, to something you said, though, I think that you have to mm. you have to pursue godly principles. Agreed. Not a feeling. Mm. Um, oh, because yeah. at the end that, of the day, I think when you chase feelings, mm -hmm. what happens is you kind of, 
you're going to either wind up in emotionalism or sensationalism. Mm. So you're going to always be looking for the hottest song to conjure up a feeling or yeah. you're going to listen to a sermon to bring back oh, a feeling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gonna, you know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, I think feelings can, you know, they can lead us astray. Mm. And so, you know, I think at the end of the day, what you want to do is you want to kind of find things that feel the soul. You you got to feel the soul with your, with its word. Mm. Like you got to be still before God in prayer. And, and see, I need you to know, like, that sense of connectedness and intimacy, it doesn't precede time in the secret place. Mm. It follows you when you go into the secret place where there is no warm and fuzzy. Come on. And there is no feeling. Come on. And there is no affirming emotion. Come on. Come on. And you got to press into that place. <sighs> and sometimes you got to kind of persevere when you're sleeping and you're tired. You're tired. And your mind is Ooh. wandering all over the place. I wish I could tell you, man, that when I open up my Bible in my house, man, that, man, light shines mm. out of the scriptures and <laughs> angels stand in the corner, man, <laughs> playing the harp. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. just <laughs> glory fills yeah. the room. <laughs> There's some days where you just, you, you ain't feeling it no. and you got to press in and you got to lean in and 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 as you and as you go mm. and as you dig mm. like that's when you begin to get revelation and yeah. and clarity yeah. and the sense of connectivity and so i do think that like you know i want to just encourage somebody yeah. to not chase the feeling because what you'll do is you always you you'll find always you let me go to a church service mercy and, and, and that's not bad yeah. or let me find a good song Mm -hmm. But like what you're trying to do is you're trying to conjure an emotion. Mm. And what it is, it's like having a diet of cotton candy. Ooh. Like, I mean, it's going to give you that little burst, yeah. <laughs> but it's going to go from you quickly. Mm. And it, and and it won't crash. sustain you very yeah. long. Yeah. So you got to make sure that you just have sustenance to your spiritual mm -hmm. diet, word, mm -hmm. uh, prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, and, and honestly, and this is one of the overlooked components of having nearness with God. You know what helps you really maintain a sense of connectivity that we got? And I think this is why we kind of have the void that we are we have is a life of service, mm. yeah. a life of service unto your fellow man. I would agree. Like, honestly, if you want to feel connected or have a sense of God's nearness, live a life where you are not at the center of your own orbit. Mm. Like when mm -hmm. you live a life of service to those who are disenfranchised, oppressed, mm. left behind, mm. marginalized. I mean, you know, you you are living in godly space because mm -hmm. like even the Bible says, man, he who gives to the poor lends to the Lord and the Lord will repay him. And so I just think that like, you know, seek, you know, a substantive spiritual diet where you're not chasing the high or the feeling, but you're chasing God. Mm. Live a life of service. That's good. But again, you got to walk in truth and not in the feeling because at the end of the day, I may be a little disconnected. I might be in a spiritual drought. But I am never far from my Savior. Mm -hmm. The moment you turn, the moment you embrace faith, faith, the moment you say, God, come in, it is just Done. like that. Just like that. It is that instant. Mm -hmm. and there is not this great traverse, this great chasm I've got to traverse. He is nigh. He is close. And, and honestly, he says, listen, behold, I'm standing at the door and knocking. If any man hear my voice mm -hmm. and open the door. I'll come, come in, in and sup with him and he, he with, with me. me. Now, God Ooh. says, I'm not going to knock down the door, but if you open it voluntarily, oh, yeah. I'm there. I'm yeah. there. I'm Coming there. I'm, I'm there. giving you the invitation. I'm Ooh. there. I'm in. But, but the only question is, are we in? Are we in? Mm. Yeah. Are we in? Love it. That's Love good. It. That's good. Love it. Love it. Brings to mind moments where I've had to um, uh, just uh, literally fall prostrate. Mm -hmm. Straight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Want to make sure I say the correct word. Yeah. Prostrate. Prostrate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In front of, uh, you know, and I don't do that often. That's mm -hmm. not a daily thing. Sure. Mm -hmm. But there are those moments where I'm like, I got to bridge the gap. Mm -hmm. You know, and I feel a gap, and the gap is on my. I get the gap is on my end. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's just a prayer away. away. Yeah. Right. But I have to bridge the gap, and when I when I fall prostrate. Mm -hmm. And and I'm like, okay, yep. you know what's going on, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I see. I have felt power, and I've seen change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. That's Amen. It. Amen. That's it. All right. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. You're not far from God. Not really. You may feel that way mm. because of circumstances or choices or you know other things, but you're not. Remember, mm -hmm. stop, pray, pray, and breathe, and breathe.
Breathe is produced by David Person for Breath of Life. Executive producer is Deblier Snell. And sound engineer is Kirk Nugent. Audio episodes of Breathe can be found on Apple, Spotify, or Google Podcast platforms. For video episodes and extra content, check out the Breath of Life YouTube channel. Breath of Life is faith-based content, resources, and programs from a contemporary urban perspective for those looking for hope and guidance. We believe that every breath we take is a testimony that God is consistent, that He loves us, and has a plan for our lives.